That's their history. And Ellen White, I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, we could, I could literally go on for hours. I, I spent a lot of time researching this stuff and trying to decide what I wanted to include and what I didn't want to include. You look at the life of Ellen White, that lady, <laughs> and I don't even have it in. She, she plagiarized. She, she claimed to be this prophet of God, but she also had very minimal education. I don't remember, recall exactly what level of education she had, but it was grade school, right? Just grade school uh, education, yet her writings had a great vocabulary. So they would say, oh, well, I mean, obviously God's, you know, working through her because she's able to write this stuff that she doesn't even have the education for. Well, no, no, actually, she was a ripoff artist and this is well documented, and, and I, I saw for myself, I don't just want to come up and make accusations. I don't have the source. Of, oh, um, you can look up the, I think it's called the Great White Lie. I believe that's the name of, of the book, so, the something White Lie. And the guy's last name, I think, was Ray. And he, uh, he does comparisons of the actual works that she plagiarized with her books side by side and just shows... I mean, in one instance, she literally copied like the table of contents and like all the chapters of her book were exactly the same as another book with like a tweak here or there. I mean, imagine yourself if you had a paper in high school that you had to do a research paper and you didn't want to do it and you wanted to play drives, but you, you knew you had to like change some words to, to, to not, to try to not make it as obvious or, you know, whatever. That's what she did. But it's obvious. Right, so for the, for the teacher grading the paper, it's obvious, right? It does, your, your few words that you, you switched the order on or changed up a little bit doesn't fly. And, and that book documents the, all the time. And she, she even stole images, like literal images that they had in a book. She copied that and put that in her book. No credit, no sourcing, nothing. I mean, she, she took the images, she took sources. So all this stuff she's producing, so, oh yeah, God's using me. She was just compiled from all these different theologians. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy to me. Now, I'm going to get into, and, and now look, there are people even today that they reject Ellen White. I would actually talked to one out soul winning. That was a Seventh-day Adventist. He's, oh yeah, I don't, but I, I, don't, I don't, you know, subscribe to Ellen White and her teaching and stuff like that. Why are you Seventh-day Adventist? I mean, she, she was foundational in the movement, even being a movement, even being an organization, and, and all the things that they, they believed and have espoused have come, like, from her. She's a source. But here is, again, from their Adventist.org website, part of, they, they have their fundamental beliefs. I think it's like the 28 fundamental beliefs, okay? This is there to this day. This is their current fundamental beliefs. Number 10 is their experi the experience of salvation is a title. Here's what they say. In infinite love and mercy, God made Christ who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might be made the righteousness of God. Now notice as we read through this, you'll read a lot, there's a lot of statements like this. Like, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's right. And this is why it's so subtle and this is why it could be so dangerous for people caught up in these cults because there are so many things that they could have right. But where they're wrong, they're extremely wrong. It's really bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's damnable heresy. So um, continuing on, it says, Led by the Holy Spirit, we sense our need. Acknowledge our sinfulness, which I agree with that. We have to acknowledge our sinfulness. We have to acknowledge that we're sinners and we deserve a punishment. But then, of course, they say, repent of our transgressions, which lumps them in with every other false Christian religion that's out there. And exercise faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord, substitute and example. And this is similar to what the Jehovah's Witnesses, their New World Translation even says, you know, active faith, exercise your faith, exercise your faith, which, which, which is involved works, right? Not just faith, but exercising your faith, which means doing something with your faith, which is not what the Bible teaches. I mean, it does in, in certain areas, right? I mean, doing good works and things, but not for your salvation. This is in, in completely in context of the experience of salvation. Exercise your faith. And then it says, This saving faith comes through the divine power of the word and is the gift 
of God's grace, which I didn't even realize they had any hints of Calvinism in, in, in them. But what they're saying is that this saving faith is the gift of God's grace, that your faith is God's gift, right? So, so that's what the Calvinists would say, is that God's gift to you is that he's given you the faith in order to believe on him. And that's where the Calvinist comes up with the, you didn't do anything. You didn't even put your faith on Christ because God gave you that gift to be able to believe on him. Therefore, God chose you and you're, you're you know, one, one of his chosen, one of his elect, because he gave you that gift to believe on him. 